What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to my channel and another Beastly Indie. This episode is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more political than what I normally talk about, but I feel this is a public service announcement and I really want to get this information out to my fans and my subscribers so that you can kind of share this with the people who you love and care about and maybe open a few eyes. The war on terror has been going on for 15 years and it doesn't have it doesn't appear to have an end in sight. There's war at home, war abroad, there's mass shootings on American soil that doesn't seem to be stopping. It's like a revolving door of crazy men walking into gun-free zones and letting loose on unsuspecting victims. Overseas, we have suicide bombers galore that walk into highly populated areas, sit down amongst the people, and blow people up. And it's a horrible, horrible thing. That's the terror that we are fighting, uh, supposedly. Now, my question to you guys, are we making the terror? Uh, are we fighting the terror? Are we better off now than we were before 9-11? Or are we worse off after 9-11? I'm going to give you guys some facts, and I will have a link in the description for you guys to follow to get all these sources. So, are we better off before or after the war on terror? You answer that question now. If you think that we're doing better as a world, as a society, as America, than we were before the war on terror, let me know now. The Middle East was definitely safer before we invaded. And you guys might not think so, but check out these numbers. Death from terrorism has increased 4,500% after 2002. So the Middle East is insanely dangerous after our invasion. Before 2003, before we invaded Iraq, there were no suicide attacks, not one, in the history of the entire country. Since 2003, there have been 1,892. Now, this was at 2014, so I'm sure now in 2016, there have been more. Now, we want to talk about religious freedom. We want to talk about, you know, helping people to express their religious freedom. I believe Christianity and Islam uh, are under fire right now from the powers that be, to be totally honest. The government and media paints Islam as a terrorist religion when it totally is not. And uh, now over in the Middle East, they're painting Christianity as the anti-Allah religion and they're hunting people. So before the invasion... There are 1.5 million Christians living in Iraq, peaceful and free to live and going about their business, worshiping Jesus Christ and doing what they wanted to do. Now, after the war started, over 1 million fled to Syria, which, of course, did not work out well for them in Syria. Most of them were killed by rebels in Syria, and today less than half a million remain, and they are being hunted and killed by groups like ISIS. So there was free Christianity in the Middle East. And after our invasion, these terrorist groups, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, they went after Christianity and anyone who was worshiping a god that they considered false. And so they started chasing after Christians and finding them and beheading them and taking the daughters and doing all this evil, what I call demonic shit. So they went from 1.5 million Christians to half a million since 2003. In 2014 alone, in Afghanistan, insurgents killed... 2,643 civilians. So these are regular people, not army, not any type of armed service. These are people walking to get milk or to get uh, grains or going about their business, going about their daily life. In one year, they killed 2,643. In Pakistan, in the four, now, now this is interesting. In the 14 years before 9-11, in Pakistan, there was only one suicide bomber. In 14 years... Now, in the 14 years since 9-11, there have been 486 suicide bombers. Now, in 2015, the United States has spent $6 trillion on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. That is a ton of money, and we're already in debt. Our kids are born in debt in this country. Now, $6 trillion at that time... That's $75,000 per American household. So all these people in America who are, you know, struggling and can't survive and, and nickel and diming, they could have gave that money and boosted our economy and made the American home a much, much better place for middle America, typical America. But here we are 15 years later, everyone's poor, people are struggling, and we got all this death and all this rage and, and terror around the, the world 
when they could have actually done something good with that money. Instead of putting $6 trillion into killing people and getting people killed and spawning terrorist groups, they could have gave that money to the American household and every family would have had $75,000. Now, I have family who've been to the war Desert Storm, who's actually gone over to Afghanistan and fought. And, and luckily for, for my family, these people have actually come home. But there's a lot of people who go over there and die. In 2015, over 7,000 U.S. military personnel have died in the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And every single day here in America, 22 veterans commit suicide. So every day we can say goodbye to 22 law-abiding veterans who've put their lives on the line for the freedoms of this country, who can't deal with the stress of what they saw or what they did over there, and they're going to commit suicide every single day. So these are some facts that I wanted to give you guys that you could probably share with someone you know, or a person who speaks highly of the war on terror. There are people out there who will tell you that the war on terror was a huge success, that we're safer now, that America's safer, that they're safer overseas. No one is safer now. We've done nothing but spawned more hatred. When you go over there and you kill innocent people, their family has joined the ranks of your enemy at that point. We're spawning these people. These ISIS, these Al-Qaeda guys are coming from us going over there and killing these people. I hate to say it, but we are better with Assad in power. The world was. It was safer. It was safer with Saddam Hussein in power. And 9-11 in itself is going to be another indie because there's a lot of things about 9-11 that are dubious at best. I don't believe the government uh, story of what 9-11 was and how it occurred. There are too many questions to be asked. There's too much common sense for the, the average American or a critical thinking person to believe what they told us in the media. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below about the war on terror. Should we just pull out and start over? Should we go after more ISIS guys? What should we do moving forward as a country to ensure the safety of the people here at home and people abroad? Be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think. Also, give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and the content. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe now. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Take off.